Hey, what's going on, YouTube people? It's uh, Thanksgiving. It's November 26, 2020, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm in Chicago, Illinois, so let me start off by saying there's a lot of things I'm thankful for and a lot of things I'm not thankful for. So today, I... Um, well, my, let me start off by saying the following. I've had a work injury since November, that occurred on November 10th, 2016. A full body slip and fall, immense pain. Any movement has been very painful. That's back since 2017. Any movement at all, any movement at all, whatsoever, it doesn't matter. It's extremely painful. I was on narcotics for a long time. I had to get off them because they were habit forming and they stopped working. I was taking tramadol. I have seen no benefits. And up to this point in time, I've been tested for HIV, cancers, and a lot of things. And apparently everything is good, but I haven't felt good for the past year and a half. Okay. Um, I have degenerative disc disease, I have sciatica, I have scoliosis, I'm pretty sure a form of arthritis, I have some type of heart condition, I have narcolepsy, I have a lot of problems medically. The only one that really prevents me from joining the military, and this is, I'm gonna say this, is my back. And believe me, before I got this job, which ironically is why we're here, why we came to the emergency room with my brother, my parents don't wanna come, was because of something that happened at my job, but the military said because of my back injury, I'm disqualified from joining the military. That was the biggest letdown, I'm sure. It was going to be a very hard environment, a very difficult environment to work in, I just to, but I had no other option. I have no other option. I can't afford school, but this is what's going on. I finally have a job and I still can't afford school. Anyways, on November 24th, 2020, between 2 p.m. Central Standard Time to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, one of my coworkers, whose name is apparently Ricardo Cruz, he's a new hiree. I work in stock. I'm a brand ambassador at Forever 21. So I'm heterosexual, I'm straight. I've been getting tested for HIV and uh, all this other stuff since 2017 due to something that happened in 2017 and you're all familiar with that some of you have told basically a sexual assault happened to me they found dna i was assigned a detective to the case detective cho and fuller they never kept in contact there was somebody called daniela sanchez never kept in contact uh basically they told me they found evidence of other people's dna inside of me yeah happened in my sleep and what ended up happening was to this day ever since then I've been getting tested because why not and so I just took one also a few months back I bought it I took another one earlier it says it's negative I took one in 2015 I've basically been taking them for a while because why not I have my karyotype fully my chromosomes everything so i there's a lot of th stuff going on but basically on november 24th 2020 between 2 and 4 p.m that guy ricardo cruz we i work in the back room in stock and we put sensors on clothes so nobody steals them it's like a needle that's this big it has an ink pad and you basically put it through the hole and you close it and that's basically that's it. I was turned around and uh, basically I was sorting through the clothes. I was handling, I was trying to, I'm very organized. And so I was putting everything in order. This guy 
comes out of he was right next to me but he was super close and he just like stabbed me in my hand and this is what i it wasn't like yeah he stabbed me in my hand that's the area of my body that was exposed every other thing was you know covered up and he just came up while i was turned around and he stabbed me in my hand with one of those safety pins and he did it like in a very slick manner and uh i already talked to my pcp my primary care physician i brought it up to a bunch of my contacts for safety reasons and this happened on november 24th today it's thanksgiving it's november 26 2020 we came here like i stated 251 east erie was it yeah it's uh it doesn't say where it just says i know it's 251 east erie north western medicine emergency medicine i was seen for diagnosis exposure to needle apparently by peter b pruitt md that was not the case at all i was seen by a resident she gave me her name not that it matters probably and i told her the situation how the co-worker stabbed me while i was doing my job and basically i'm still under 72 hours when i asked her the whole reason was to get preventative medicine to stop it to stop the infection if i have it as stated i've been tested for a lot of things and i don't have anything now if i should have it then that's the whole reason i came here and we shared things with my family with my brother now the whole reason of me coming here was to make sure I don't have it. But she said she doesn't see this. And it's right here in my hand. There was pus coming out of it. It was very... Yeah. And so, basically, they didn't want to give me anything. And what I... The files that I sent some of you, you know, my coworkers saying, Oh, why are you going to censor? Why are you trying to censor? Why are you doing this and that? which is something that I do. Censoring is like putting the pins on the clothes and you heard the voice logs. I just found it really weird how why they would say that one day after that happened. Like, why would they start saying that? And them coming around. So right now, basically, I feel like they're doing this on purpose. They're doing this on purpose. They didn't want to give... And the, the medicine is called PEP or PrEP. Back when on November 27th or uh, July 2017, when I had that exposure, my doctor, PCP, primary care physician, was ready to prescribe me the medicine because of the exposure. However, with this situation, after speaking to these residents, they said that they don't feel the need to prescribe anything. And what, what ended up catching me as very, very ironic or something that was something very interesting was the fact that um, they basically told me um oh if you get it it's a very treatable disease it's a very treatable disease why would they tell me that and not prescribe something that could prevent it if i have it i told them so i'm free to have you know go about my sexual life normally i'm free to share things i'm free to do all this and that and it's completely safe and they said yes and I didn't know much about the medicines because the last situation was in 2017, but they didn't want to prescribe it. And then I did some research. It costs anywhere from like 500 to thousands of dollars. And I'm wondering if that's the real reason they didn't want to prescribe anything. Because I'm minority and they just don't want to prescribe medicine that could prevent a disease. They just want, who knows. So I'm going to take the uh, steps to see what is going to you know what's going on and then the whole situation that i came here for was the fact that uh, basically also the weirdest thing that i could that and you heard the voice file so they didn't hear that would be medical negligence i'm getting ahead of myself so if after one month i test positive three months positive then that means that when i came here today at november november 24th 2020 between the hours of basically 6 p.m. Central Standard Time onward to 6.30. They did nothing. It was probably 5, 5.30. Yeah, it was 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, about an hour. If I test positive, 
they're responsible. Northwestern is responsible for, for whatever happens because if they could have prevented it, they could have. And honestly, I don't buy the fact that they didn't want to prescribe the medicine because it could cause side effects. If somebody is coming to you and telling you that they were possibly exposed to HIV and you don't want to give a medicine, that's medical malpractice. This is why I came to the ER. And the only reason that I wanted it prescribed is because, of course, first of all, why would my coworker stab me? Second of all, why would he be handling things in a very aggressive manner? So that day he was slamming things. He was just arguing. And he was also talking about how all this, like how he hated his family, how he hated a lot of people. And he's just generally that he was acting very weird. And he disclosed the fact that he sleeps with a lot of men, that he's, you know, this and that. He's gay. I'm straight, right? So all of that stuff, I felt like... Oh, and he wasn't even... He didn't even work in the back. So typically, he would be on the sales floor. I'm always in the back. That's where they have me. I have yet to be on the sales floor. Unrelated, no, but I had to include it. And they put him to work there that day. And, you know, that's one day after... The, the day prior, I had just, you know, gone to file my workers' compensation claims uh got him notarized and then one day after this guy does this i just found it very odd how the distinction between the actions and every single time that i do something for my claim shit happens so on july 28th also after i filed my workers comp stuff that one phone incident that you all know of with the stains and the and the fingerprints that arrived on it that's weird every single time and so basically today, I just wanted to make this this short video that we were both seen, me and my brother, we were both seen for the same thing. This is what it was. And they saw no reason to prescribe preventative medicine. It's still under 72 hours. This is where we were. And so, yeah, if anything were to develop, then you know they failed to act. And the fact that the woman stated, well, it's a very treatable disease. It's almost like she's saying, we're just going to let you, if, 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 if the person has HIV or not, which legally they have to disclose to an employer, right? So all the stuff that they have you i know when i applied i had to legally disclose the fact that i have a work injury i turned in paperwork i turned in a lot of stuff medical supplementation so if they hired him and he withheld the fact that he had hiv i'm not you know even and he didn't he didn't disclose it to the company that's against the law and so if that's the case and he hit it that's illegal to do by law you have to disclose everything I told everybody about my situation at work. They know my situation. I'm pretty sure some people there hate that situation, but nonetheless, I disclosed it. Also, there's a few people intercepting in the area. They're talking. Anyways. Yeah, I, I disclosed that, but if this person who is this it was acting in that way just did not disclose that fact then that's illegal too right and so i just want to document it this hospital didn't act did not act and it's corrupt That's the time right now. And uh, everything better be okay within months because I'm going to be completely uh, abstinent from everything. And that's a bet. I'm going to abstain from everything. So I want to document it that if I should test complete, like something, 
then it's this. Or if something were to happen, regardless of anything at all, this. Because every single time, every single time that I put something out there, it seems like these people do not like the approach that I take. What am I supposed to do? Just take everything like a dumbass? I didn't even see this doctor, but he's listed as a person that I came to see. I wonder if he's the reason why they didn't want to prescribe this. And then when I told them I was in the emergency room also, and I said, I want to get my liver checked. I want to get my heart checked. I want to get stuff checked. They said, oh, this is the ER, so we can't do anything. So there you go. They didn't even want to check me out for other things. They, if they weren't, if they weren't concerned with the fact that the, I brought up the HIV thing and they didn't want to check with anything. And I, you know, you, you heard the thing. I was live streaming it. So there you go. More situations. And I called my primary care physician, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Cruz, and I told her about the situation. I told her how they didn't want to prescribe anything. I told her where we were. And so basically, they told me to follow up with my PCP. But if anything should test positive, this hospital failed to act. And I was already expecting them to say no. So we'll see. We'll see. One second. Listen. Listen. It's too dangerous in this situation. What? To prevent the disease from tra from spreading? If it if I have it or not? Apparently it's too dangerous. There you go. Kind of like how I have received no benefits from my workers' compensation claim. It's not even in Sedgwick's system. Dealing with a whole bunch of shit. But here it is, man. They told me everything is fine. And like, I've been tested for everything up until last month when I went to see my doctor. Everything is still fine. So if after one month, I have a disease, like I said, that's no coincidence. Okay, very short blog. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And um, take care and be safe. Oh, one more detail. So for some reason, coworkers wanted me to hang on to a knife that did not belong to me for some odd reason and I don't know why that was but basically they told me to hang on to that oh
Oh, listen how they reacted when I wanted to start censoring stuff. Yeah, the entirety of what I sent you guys is like hours long. Some of you have seen it, but basically, let me see if I can find it right now because this is basically a live stream at this point. It's basically them wanting me to hold on to a, somebody else's blade for no apparent reason. Give me a second here. Enjoy the scenery outside. Listen to this. My coworker asked me to hold somebody else's knife. Why? Why? After being pricked, why? I found that extremely odd. Never has that man left his blade and asked somebody to hold it for him. I've known this man. We've been talking. He's a pretty cool guy. We talked at length about, you know, our lives and he knows his house situation, my life, a lot of stuff. He's a pretty good worker. I like him. He's an older man, has a family. He's pretty cool. But what I don't understand is the fact that why would he, they ask me to hold his knife? And then later on, of course, I'm not going to play the voice log, but basically I ended up bringing it up to my manager, Melissa. I said, hey, Nanny told me to hold this knife for Gaspar. Why me? I'm going to leave it here on your desk. And she said, things are going to go missing here. So leave it over there in the back, which is where we work stock. It's like directly down the little, you know, place. It's close to where we are. And so that's where I left it. I left it on the rack, on the gorilla racks, they call it. Gorilla racks or whatever. 
and that's like where we have our markers where we have all our things drinks cups of coffee uh stereo equipment it's like where we all leave our personal things and uh that's where i left it it's a red blade with a knife and she didn't want to hold on to it my manager so i left it there why was i gonna hold somebody else's blade i felt that was weird especially after being pricked by the guy it's a lot of weird things man and then they were talking about settlements and how they could help and the weirdest thing is when i texted that one girl it showed up a guy's picture who was called joel mingo and i don't know if he's related to crimes but at this point you all know i'm dealing with a large amount of corruption extortion manipulation and this is a number that i was texting i texted her and this is what she says that's the first day i texted her it's a little reverse but yeah She goes by the name of Sal, apparently. Uh, I think she's trans, he's transgender, boy to girl, girl to boy. But yeah, it's just a lot of weird events. And this all happened literally this week. So on, on November 23rd, up until yesterday, November 25th. And today is the 26th, Thanksgiving. All those events it's weird and the final note i will end on is the fact that the um the area that i'm in whenever i'm looking up like workers compensation stuff or anything that has to do with all this stuff that relates to my case oh and here's the stuff so they they acknowledge that i arbitrator acknowledged this is for my workers comp every single time that i talk about my work comp case or anything i have an app called AIMSICD and it shows me who's leeching connection who has stuff basically for counter surveillance legally and it always shows me that the connection is being intercepted here at uh some place called the Intelligencia Cafe in downtown and what's funny not even funny what's very weird is that it's six minutes away from the Industrial Workers Comp Commission 100 Randolph in Chicago Illinois west randolph i think and so right now today when i came here earlier we're in the area it's literally 10 minutes away from this hospital and i find it very odd that the same day back in october you guys saw my vlog i was making a video and basically the the power got shut off the computer went dead and what ended up happening was that the connection was shut off remotely so that day was weird and when i did a, an ip address check it showed that there was somebody running interference from their penthouse or one of these buildings here at near the intelligentsia cafe and pilsen so it's like minority so it's a crime syndicate and so today also earlier on it's currently 6 50 p.m central standard time when I was walking around here and I was talk discussing, keep in mind they wiretap everything, I was discussing the situation and getting medicine and how I'm worried about transmitting it among my family, regardless, anyone. They, the phone sh showed to have been intercepted and was being, you know, listened in on, of course, all the time, even right now. The car has an antenna and it's just illegal how they're doing it. However, what are the odds of them communicating between each other and just saying, deny him this, deny him that? Who knows? All I know is I've taken up to this point, I'm healthy. We're both healthy. My whole family is healthy. My immediate family's healthy up until this point. So if there should be anything that just comes on about randomly or should anything happen to us, because don't forget I'm a journalist. Don't forget what some of you told me in the summer. If anything happens to you, we'll be sure to investigate. Who the hell says that? And to my the person i was speaking to in uganda bro who was that person i know who it was but why would you listen to her saying speak to him i still have that recording you you understand that like why man why speak to him she physically told you speak to him and you did 
and you said everything will be all right. I really hope so, man. I really hope so, because Chicago is corrupt. Anyways, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Just a quick blog. I needed to get this out there, and yeah, they didn't prescribe me any medicine. Apparently, the rate, risk of transmission is very low, and I'm sure it had nothing to do with the cost. I'm healthy as of today, of, for everything. And I also uh, bought a test kit that showed negative. So let's see. Happy Thanksgiving. If you don't celebrate it, happy holidays. November 26, 2020, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, Chicago, Illinois, 606, 60611, actually, in the area that I'm at. Northwestern Medicine Hospital, downtown near the Industrial Workers' Comp Commission, near those Intelligentsia Cafes, surrounded by people with a lot of money and corruption. Thank you.